So I was running an engraving operation on the laser cutter last week, and all of a sudden the machine just shut off. Uh, it happened once before too, shortly after I got it. And uh, so I'm just going to cover the two two common reasons why your laser cutter might just shut off, appear to lose power. So the first one, um, shortly after I got it, was that it had just blown a fuse. So I didn't know this until I read into it. Uh, but down where your power cable connects, uh, you can, there's a fuse that's replaceable down there. And then this past week when it happened, um, it's actually the, the rotary switch on the side here as well. Uh, it just completely melted. So the two reasons, uh, when the fuse burnt out, it was because I, was, I had my fan, my exhaust fan, and my water pump plugged into the back of the machine, which just apparently pulls too much current through the machine. So that's why I blew the fuse. Uh, so that's an easy replacement. And then I just moved the, my chiller and exhaust fan to a, another outlet, another circuit, and that's solved that problem. The issue last week uh, with the rotary selector, I had just moved. Um, if you watched my video on adding the, uh, the air to the controller on this laser cutter, uh, the laser cutter used to be on the other side of my shop. I moved it over to this side. Uh, just another roll-up door here, but when I moved it, I forgot to connect the ground cable from the back of the machine to a grounding source. Um, I'm not sure why inside the machine it's not grounded through the outlet plug, but uh, that's something I probably need to look into. So I didn't have that going, and it was doing the, the engraving operation, and all of a sudden it just died just like before. So um, couldn't figure it out at first, got out the multimeter and tested the plugs, and power just wasn't getting past that switch. So, um, fuses, uh, six, uh, five pack on Amazon, it's like less than five bucks, so about a buck a piece. Um, the switch, Amazon, seven bucks, and then I also bought a couple uh, e-stop backup switches, so that was for, um, six bucks a piece. So, e-stops here on the top, so I actually just hardlined it through the, past the rotary switch, and uh, right now my e-stop is just controlling the machine. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull out my pull out my power cord and my network cable, and I'll show you guys how to replace uh, this rotary selector knob. So here we are at the side of the machine. Uh, pull out my power cord, my 110, my network cable. I grab my three millimeter Allen head. Pop out these four screws. And also show you right here. Uh, so here's my power plug, if you can see, but uh, there's a little fuse right below it. All you do is you just stick your nail in there and pull like slide that guy out, and then your fuse is the one that's not inside the box. So you can check that. Um, to make sure that your fuse isn't burnt out. You can also store an extra one in there just in case. Um, so as long as that's good, you can slide it back in. Finish removing this control panel. Like I said, I just bypass that before it actually um, the switch head it's got these two it's got two parts so if you depress this white um, tab here you can just pull the rotary knob right out which is nice because I don't actually have to reinstall that portion of it um, which I think I can actually pull this off as well but what had happened was these insides on both sides had just melted um, and it it essentially it just it took away the option to connect because the the connectors were melted into the plastic, so we couldn't they couldn't make contact. Um, so I'm gonna try to pull off. I'm gonna try to pull off this part as well. Let's see if I can't. Um, or is that just easy enough to not make it a big deal? Yeah. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this. So there's the old one. Here's the new one, but what I'm going to do first 
see I just bypassed these wires and I don't can't remember if I lost my connectors or not but we're gonna pull these apart and see where we're at But anyways, let's. So all we gotta do is leave that up. Take our screw bottom. Maybe we'll get a different screwdriver. Okay, so I've got the red screwdriver now. Um, there's also this black protective case that goes over. So um, it doesn't matter which one's going which size. You just want to line up the same size of this letter, so 11 and 12 separate, and 23 and 24 separate. So I'm gonna go ahead and this lower one right here. So I'll do this guy too. Make sure your white tabs on top is just easier that way. It's a full, it's a full ring terminal too, so I'm go ahead and take the screw all the way out. Through the internal and all the way back in. Check all these connections, make sure they're tight. Make sure I've got red to red and blue to blue. Good. Put this snap cap back on. Make sure it's protected there. I'm just gonna take this guy and slide it back in. Take our cap head screws. Just get them finger tight first. Time to go check that Amazon listing and see if I made a mistake or if they sent the wrong product. <laughs> 